Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NFL slate for this coming weekend. Uh, this is Wednesday, so it is kind of an early look. Um, we're going to have a live before lock segment on Sunday. And as well, I'm sure Bobby and or Rody will have more updated takes as we, as we progress through the week. Uh, I'm going to go over the top stacks, top overall games, uh, some individual plays. And again, injury news could kind of change things, but at least gives you a good framework for, for what I'm, at least what I'm looking at, at least at this point in the week. Um, just kind of an overall slate view. There are, I have two teams that kind of stand out as far as stack values go. And then, and, but the cool thing is after that, there's like a bunch of ways you can go, you know, uh, in the last several weeks, it's been more kind of this group of four games, uh, four and a half that, that just taken up all of my, uh, ownership and all of my, my efforts, so to speak. Uh, but here there's just basically two. But then after those two, there's like all these others that you can play, which makes for a pretty interesting uh, GPP slate. And as we'll get to it, there's actually one spot that kind of stands out way above all the others. Um, and I think ownership is also going to follow that. So I think, I think it'll, it'll be a fun slate to attack. So Carolina Atlanta is, is, is going to be quite an ugly game. I think, um, you know, Carolina has been very pesky. Last couple of weeks, they were pesky against the Rams on the road before finally giving in. And then they had the big win um, at Tampa, excuse me, home against Tampa the week that they lost uh, McCaffrey. And and listen, you guys have been following my takes on football and in all sports for a long time now. And this is th those types of things are going to be expected. You know, teams tend to pick up for each other when they lose either their starting quarterback or a big running back when everybody's counting on, out on them. And counting them out and all this stuff and they lost their coach. And so teams type tend to do that. Um, however, they also tend to kind of bounce off of those results and have kind of really bad letdown games after that. So I think the combination of the Ram and Tampa game is um, it's It's going to lead Carolina, I think to a world of trouble in this game. I think Atlanta's uh, very clearly, I think Atlanta handles them pretty easily in this game. Um, but from from a, from a fantasy perspective, there's not a lot for me to like here. I, I don't feel as though I want to stack any part of this game. Um, I, I would say that that Drake London looks to be a good value wide receiver, 5,100. And I guess uh, Kyle Pitts looks like a pretty good, you know, a good option to tight end. So I guess, listen, if you wanted to try something low owned, I mean, let me just see where they rate. I don't want to recommend something. So there's no chance. Yeah. You know, they're, they're fine. They're like one of those other teams. So what you could do is if you want to play something like Mariota with, with um, Drake London and Kyle Pitts, you know, what you do have, you do have a very natural run back in, um, in what's his name in DJ Moore on the other side, who's still really cheap at 5,300. So this is, this is actually good. If you want to know the truth this is actually a good way to start start this off um i don't know if anybody's going to do this which automatically makes them different and again when you're playing from all these other you know tertiary teams um i think it's that is good kind of good gpp theory so uh this is where i want to start the running backs for carolina um last week i didn't have it in me to do it and i should have but deontay foreman looked to be the guy at 15 rushes um, he also had a couple of targets. Um, he's not showing up for me right now with my numbers, so I can't really recommend him yet. Um, and I'm not really getting to any of the running backs in Atlanta. So I guess right off the bat, you do have kind of a sneaky sneaky type of stack to get your day going in that uh, you play Mariota with London and Pitts, run it back with DJ Moore, and you're kind of off to the races here. Okay, so now we go to Chicago, Dallas, and – Chicago, very, very nice performance on the road in, in New England on Sunday night, uh, Sunday night, on Monday night. Justin Fields had a very, very nice game. Um, yeah, he really had – he had his legs really, really, really churning, and New England really couldn't do much about it. New England was more concerned about 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 confusing uh, the public with respect to their, run, their, their quarterback situation. I was kind of happy to see that uh, blow up in their face. Um, I was expecting to see Dallas show up as a much better play than they are. Um, but I guess 
people are still disappointed at, at the lack of production last week and what was supposed to be the nut matchup against Detroit. And you have Chicago coming off a really, really nice defensive performance such that the, the Dallas guys are not really showing up as good plays. Um, I just hope that people don't make the mistake of making them like no owned. Um, because listen, for all the reasons why we liked Dallas last week, for not all the reasons, but for some of the reasons why we liked Dallas last week, um, there's these guys are still pretty fairly priced. Now, the thing is, you know, you don't have that Detroit matchup, but Chicago's defense has not been that great. I mean, with the exception of listen, they played a good game against New England or whatever, but um, I, I think that you could do worse than take a shot here. Problem is, is the runbacks in Chicago are pretty poor. You know, as, as they've shown, uh, they're, they're going to get their action from Justin Fields kind of running the ball or Montgomery running the ball or, or Herbert running the ball. And the thing is, is that Dallas's defense is so strong. I mean, I, I don't know if Chicago has enough to keep this game close enough to even, I don't know, uh, to push Dallas enough to make this work. So um, I don't know. One thing I do see interesting is Zeke Elliott not practicing. Um, boy, oh boy. If in fact he is out, then you have an incredible bit of chalk in, in, in Tony Pollard um, because people have been waiting to play Tony Pollard for three years now. And, and with Elliott out, he's going to be in a, in a you know nine point spread or whatever this is, 10 points. Uh, Power is going to be extreme chalk if, in fact, uh, Elliot is out. Um, as long as Elliot's in, th these guys are still going to timeshare and nothing's going to be worth it. Um, and on the Chicago side, um, again, more of a timeshare between Montgomery and Herbert. Uh, I'm probably not going to get to any of this. I guess if you do want to stack the Cowboys, the good thing about it is these, these Bears are cheap. You know, like your run back of, 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 of Darnell Mooney and uh, even Equinemius, 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 St. Brown. I mean, he actually got some, uh, got some action in this game against New England. He has seven targets and he also sometimes gets these rushing attempts as well. Um, so uh, he could be kind of a really low owned or no owned cheapo that you could play. And Darnell Mooney at 4,800. He's, he's way too cheap. Um, I think. So um, again, one that on the surface doesn't look so great, but as a low owned alternative to what's going to be some real chalk that we'll get to later. I really don't mind this. Um, speaking of which the, the, the aforementioned chalk. So you have Miami at Detroit um, and that's basically Coors field. Apparently according to all the projection models that not only Detroit defense is pretty bad, uh, but also it's going to be in a dome, which is kind of a surface up spot, I guess for a, uh, for Miami. Um, and you just saw the ownership last week come in on the Dallas against Detroit. And I think it's going to be no different. You have, you have, you have Tua at 6,200 and then you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle who are just, can just go crazy on this Detroit team. You know, uh, that's kind of an analytical term, uh, go crazy on. And then you have, Raheem Mostert, who's got some targets out of the backfield in this in this most recent game as well. So I think all these Miami guys uh, are going to look really, really strong. Um, and then on the runbacks, I mean, the obvious runback, presuming he's healthy, is 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 St. Brown. He was in for like one play or something. They took him out for concussion protocols, but they're going to. They said he's going to play this week, so. This is this is the chunk. Like this is this is this is what everybody's going to play. Everybody. This is what a good amount of people are going to attempt to play. Um, especially if God forbid some more value opens up. You know, if you like just if you just do this, it is kind of hard to play other guys. But you know, if you get some bit of chalk open up, this this construction is going to be kind of through the roof. So um it's it's something to consider, you know, is 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 playing real high owned stacks in football, you know, kind of worth it. And yeah, they do rate to be the top play, but I think that they are probably only about 15% uh, to, to be the top stack. Um, now that might be the favorite of, of all of the other teams, but just because they're 15, 20% to be the top stack doesn't mean that they, they're going to justify their ownership. And it also means that, 75%, you know, 80% of the time, they're not the top stack, right? 
course, you don't know which one it's going to be, but but seeing that they're going to be really high owned, um, I don't know. Uh, they're definitely the best play, but I don't think that uh, it's a bad idea to 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 fade this. And I'll say something else. Um, you know, I was watching this Miami game pretty carefully uh, against Pittsburgh. Um, I was sweating Miami. I gotta say, the Miami looked 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 fine. I mean, they 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 looked kind of like a machine for the first couple of possessions. But but I tell you, man, if if you're if you're if you want if you have Tua at chalk, and he drops back and does that thing where he looks one way and he throws these these real soft timing passes down the middle, boy oh boy, it's it's kind of cool when he's when he's low owned to see that. But when he's chalk, when those things float up into the air, it gets very it's pretty nerve wracking. I mean, for me, I kind of needed them in Survivor. Um, it was a, it was a rough sweat. Honestly, like they, Miami's offense did not look great um, after the first quarter yesterday, uh, this past week. Anyway, they are projecting to be the top play, so we'll we'll dive a little more into that later. I did mention it, Rasheed Mostert. It looks like a strong one-off, very strong play in general. Um, and aside from St. Brown, I don't really see too much coming from Detroit. So, as I mentioned, Miami was the number one stack um, on my board, at least. And then the number two, kind of a clear number two, is Minnesota um, uh, against uh, against Arizona. Um, you have the, the 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 very obvious guys. You know, you have to be paired with Cousins. You have uh, Justin Jefferson very expensive, but it is what it is. Then you have a cheaper feeling and then you have uh, Herb Smith. So all three of these guys look to be really, really strong. Um, and now we don't have to struggle for the run back anymore because now you can just play DeAndre Hopkins because um, he's back. Right? Um, you could also still try for value and and and, and play guys like Rondell Moore and, and Greg George, but this is this is definitely the pure play, is to play again Cousins with Jefferson and Thielen, or and or Smith run it back with Hopkins and then try to make the rest of your lineup work. You know, um, again you need kind of running back value to or value to open up to really make it perfect, but um, uh, I I think I think you should be able to do it. Let me just take a look to see about uh, Cook for a second, see how he's showing up. Um, yeah, Dalvin Cook looks to be a kind of a decent play. He's really not projecting as well as I thought. Um, so he's probably not going to make it for me. There's just other there's other guys right around his price range that I, that I just have as better. All right, Las Vegas against New Orleans. So we have some plays from this game. First of all, uh, well, in what, no particular order, let's do the individual plays first. Both running backs are strong plays here. Josh Jacobs and Alvin Kamara, both I bo have them both as kind of top three or four, five, you know, top five running back plays on the slate. Um, I see Josh Jacobs is, is, is still getting 15, 16% ownership despite his price hike. I think that's fair. I'm not seeing too much ownership out of Kamara though. So if, if, if this is accurate, that could be a very, very strong play. Um, as far as stacks go, I do have the, um, the, 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 the Raiders as my third overall top stack um, tied, tied third, fourth, and certainly below Minnesota. And certainly not that far ahead of these others that are just below them, but I definitely have them as very viable here. And the guys you'd want to play are, again, no no big surprise, uh, Devontae Adams and um, probably Hunter Renfro. He remains cheap at 4,900. And if you did that, I imagine natural run back would be Chris Olave, but you could use Kamara himself as a run back. Um, Cause he takes, you know, he takes a lot of stuff out of the backfield. Or you could play Juwan Johnson at 3,200 at tight end. Huh. 
but I do think that this game is again a, kind of a nice tertiary game that you can stack and and make this work. And and you, you see kind of a theme here. I'm not going to be recommending every game, but there's there's a quite a few more options this week than there have been. Uh, moving on to New England Jets, uh, this game I have no interest in stacking, but there are some one-off plays that 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 merit consideration. One being Ramondre Ramondre Stevenson at running back for New England, and another on the Jets side we have um, Garrett Wilson is showing up as a good play at 4,200. We have to see who's in and all that stuff, but that's what I have showing up right now. What's interesting is the running back situation because Brees Hall got put on to injured reserve. So I wonder, you know, they picked, they did pick up James Robinson. I wonder if he's going to actually play this week. Uh, the, the last quote by the, 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 the coach was that he wasn't going to commit to it, but I feel as though at least at the beginning, even if he does play that it's going to be somewhat of a timeshare um, between Carter and, and, and Robinson. So I don't think this is going to be a particularly fantasy friendly game. Uh, New England's coming off a loss. They're going to, they're going to play, play tight. Um, I, I think both defenses are in play this week, particularly the jets. I shouldn't say that. I think New England's defense is in play as well. I think both defenses are very, very sharp in this in this spot. And just these two one-offs make sense to me. Ramondre Stevenson and Garrett Wilson. Philadelphia against Pittsburgh. This is uh, another game where you could certainly – make a case for Philadelphia to be again, one of those tertiary stacks, like not, not one of the top ones, but right off of them. And the only problem is, is that you don't know exactly what to do with it. Like if you play Hertz, you probably want to play one of these two, either AJ Brown or Devante Smith. You're not sure exactly which one Goddard looks to be too expensive. So if you want to play both of them, the problem with, with doing this is Devontae Smith, not, not Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts is so live for these rushing touchdowns that if you play two wide receivers, you're really asking for it. If you did play this, you do have a couple of decent run back options. I prefer Pickens at 4,700 to the other ones um, just because he's cheaper. I, I do I do think that, that Claypool and Deontay Johnson are definitely in play. And the, the fact is the Philadelphia can be bringing heat on 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 uh, on Pickett, um, and it's it could be a tough day, but Pickett showed a lot of poise. I mean, he was right there with a chance to win at, at Miami last week. Uh, they they you know he he's a rookie. He's he's coming into his own. He's going to have some up games, some down games. I do think this is going to be a tough spot for him. But if Philadelphia does get decently ahead, you know they're going to have Pickens throwing the ball to get him some seasoning. And Pickens is is you know they they would like Pickens to be his number one guy. So. I think he's going to get a decent amount of targets. Pickens is very athletic. And I think that in a in a stack, you can make a case for Pickens as a good run back. As a matter of fact, just because of the way the game flow could happen, I think Pickens is probably a good overall play anyway. So uh, I do like that. Um, and that should pretty much do it for this game. Tennessee Houston. Tennessee Houston is one of those teams that is not going to show up on my on my board. I don't believe as something worth stacking. No, I'm not getting an M. Um, but let me look at the running backs. I think both these running backs are really really strong plays. As a matter of fact, I think I have them both in my top at least my top six, maybe even my top five. Yeah, I actually have Damian Pierce rated number two overall. Um, and I, then I have Derrick Henry rated like sixth or seventh or something like that. But I think both of them are, are in play. I wouldn't play them both in the same lineup, but I think they're both very strong uh, running back plays. And as far as stats go, I don't not get into either of them. I, I want to go back to one game before I forget, and then we'll bang out these last three. It, it's worth me saying that I also feel that from that Detroit game, I was just looking at my stack tool for a minute and, and Detroit in and of themselves are, are, are a good stack. You know, if, if you wanted to flip it a little bit and not, not play the Miami guys on top, 
you could do something like kind of cool and play play golf with with um with St. Brown and one of these others, like maybe a Khalif Raymond or something like that, and then run it back with maybe just one of the KC, uh, one of the uh, Miami guys, make it a little bit cheaper, maybe, you know? So that's something you can do. And the other thing about that game we have to always monitor is this, is DeAndre Swift, um, whether he's going to be back or whatever it is. If he's back, he's probably going to be in play. But um, we'll have to take a look at that. All right, the last three games here, you have Washington against Indianapolis. This game, I really don't have anything. I don't have either team as particularly stackable. And as far as individual plays, I really don't have much either. I, I, let me just, I always have to take a look to see if Jonathan Taylor rates to be a strong play. I mean, not, not really. I mean, I have him below Dalvin Cook. You know, um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I really don't have him in my top group. I have, listen, I'll, I'll go over them at the end, but I have one guy we have to get to that Pierce, Jacobs, Moster, we talked about, Stevenson, Kamara, and Derrick Henry. We'll finish off with a couple of others later. But this game, I really don't have too much of. Let me just make sure that wide receivers, I'm not getting to any of uh, Michael Pittman. No, not not today. Um, I don't know why, but just not today. So this game is kind of a dud for me. Uh, San Francisco against the Rams. Now, this is going to be – this is kind of a brutal, brutal take. Not even take, but a brutal observation. I, I actually have have the Rams somehow as, as playable. Um, I have them actually tied for Vegas for third, fourth. Um Really, really bizarre seeing how good uh, how good San Francisco's defense can be and how awful the Rams' offense has looked at times. But just what it is, it is what it is. You know, I, I, you play Stafford with Cup. Oh, so hard to even get these guys in. And then the best play I have on the whole board for this the game is probably Higby. Higby I have is clearly the top tight end. The problem is going to be like what to do on the San Francisco side, even if you do stack this game at all. I mean, what are you going to do? You want to play McCaffrey? I, I don't know. Uh, you want to play one of these receivers for San Francisco, like Kittle or something? Not really. So I, I'm probably going to avoid my numbers in this game and probably just not play anything except for Higby. And then we have the uh, the greatest uh, the greatest team in football, the New York Football Giants, at six and one. Versus the second best team in football, the greatest uh, Seattle Seahawks team, uh, whatever. Two teams that I think that, you know, if you you combine their projected win totals, it probably would, would equal eight between the two of them. And they have more than that already. Uh, nonetheless, we got Giants at Seattle. Giants are coming off just, I guess, four straight incredible wins in a row. Um I didn't think they would have them to go into Jacksonville to win that game. They pulled it out. And now they have to go another road game uh, against Seattle, who is coming off a big win on the road of their own. So uh, I do, I do like Seattle against the spread. If that matters, probably shouldn't. Uh, but as far as, as, as the plays in this game, um, I don't have either of these teams as a team to stack. I was expecting to see some more kind of Seattle, but I guess it's because we don't, we're not sure what's going on with, with, um, with, uh, with, with D, DK Metcalf. I, he says he wants to practice. Um, I don't know. Uh, we have to see what's going to happen with him. I, I have to say that if he's out, then all this stuff has to come into play. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't have them, I don't have them projected quite yet, but, I imagine that Marquis Goodwin at 4,400 is going to slip into that role or slip into the lineup at least, starters, and get more targets. And it's going to be really, really cheap. Um, and Lockett's going to be you know, obviously the number one target. The, the, but the guy who's showing up once again as a really strong play is, is Kenneth Walker, uh, Kenneth Walker the third, I should say, not Kenneth Walker Jr. I have him rated number one overall as far as running backs go. And, uh, the other guy in this game is from the other side of the ball, and that would be Saquon Barkley, who I have him as one of the top 
I mean, not as I don't have him rated as high as as Walker, but where do I have him? Uh, I have Saquon Barkley rated just below Kamara. So first, second, third, fourth, like seventh. It's fair enough. Um, but I do have Kenneth Walker as as number one overall play overall running back play on the slate. But I also have a thirty percent ownership, and I don't know. You know, the Giants have been pretty stout. You know, they they've been pretty they've been well coached on both sides of the ball. Um, I don't know. It it, se- it seems to me that that Kenneth Walker, I I prefer to fade him. I think in this spot. Um, that's, that's, that's my opinion, but it is rated right now to be a very strong play. So we'll, 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 we'll start with that. I'm not really getting any of the receiving from, uh, options from the giants in this game. Although it's kind of expecting to, you know, these Seattle games have been highly projected for the last like several weeks. And this is the one time that they're really not, they're really not showing up. Um, Wondell Robinson, he's questionable. He hasn't really done anything. Darius Slayton really hasn't done anything. Yeah, none of these guys are really showing up. Um, anyway, uh, let me just kind of recap where I'm at. M- Miami's showing up to be the top um, top overall stack for probably for good reason. But I think there are things you could do to get off of that. Number one is right off the bat, you could play the Detroit side, um, which 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 certainly makes a lot of sense. You still get get some exposure to that game, but you could overweight the Detroit side instead of the Miami side. Uh, the 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 other very natural pivot I have is Minnesota. There's number two, and then a whole bunch of these other teams we talked about. So we're going to review them: the Vegas, Philly, uh, Atlanta, super sneaky at a one o'clock game, and then uh, and then Dallas. Um, uh, so that's pretty much it. It's it's, a, it's an early look, so things could open up, but I think that gives you a little head start on how to attack this slate.